Welcome to Business Innovators Radio, featuring industry influencers and trendsetters sharing proven strategies to help you build a better life right now. Another episode of Business Innovators Radio. I'm your host, Donna Gunter. Today we have with us Nicole Jansen, business coach and podcast host. As a business owner and entrepreneur for over 20 years, Nicole Jansen has helped thousands of individuals and organizations earn millions of dollars. Her deep passion for helping people maximize their potential and achieve greater success for themselves and their families is what has made her one of the most in-demand speakers and coaches in her region. She has developed her own special brand of mentorship, which focuses on tapping into your strengths and true purpose, integrating business and life mastery principles for holistic success. Nicole coaches entrepreneurs and business owners to build profitable businesses around their purpose and strengths so they can have fun, make money, and make a difference. She's also the host of Leaders of Transformation podcast. Welcome to the show, Nicole. Thank you, Donna. Thank you for having me. I appreciate you uh, inviting me, and I'm excited to be here today. Well, Nicole, I always like to start out by asking how people got where they are. What led you into the business coaching industry? Was it something that you always knew that you wanted to do? No, actually, not at all. It's kind of funny because uh, I know some people say, you know, they got into the coaching industry because they're like, oh, you know, I just dreamed of being a coach, and then I built a coaching business. For me, it was a bit different because I, I kind of backed into it. I had a business. I've always been an entrepreneur. I started my entrepreneurial ventures very young when I was a kid. Um, My family also was very entrepreneurial, so I helped out in their business. I started my first official registered business with the ministry when I was 16. And, you know, I just, uh, I actually thought that was going to be my future, where I was going to build that business, which is sales and marketing, and I've sold everything under the sun. And then uh, also, our family business became extremely successful, and I spent a lot of time there and became partners with my parents in and, and building that business. Uh, we, we built a multi-million dollar business there. But along the way, we had some challenges, which, um, uh, long story short, I ended up looking at and saying, okay, what do I want to do the rest of my life? And so I started Discovery Edge in 2005 as a training and development company, but it was only through people that were coming to my workshops and that I was meeting that were, they were saying, can you coach me? And I'm like, no, no, I'm not, a, I wouldn't be a good coach, you know, <laughs> tell you what you need to do. <laughs> and, and so I, I was thinking therapist, right? Back then, coaches were not that common, right? So I was thinking therapist. I'm like, no, I don't think I'd make a really good therapist. And, uh, and so, but it was after being asked so many times, people said, could you coach me? And how do you do what you do? And, and how can I do that? that that's how I became uh, a coach. I agreed to do it with one person, and then one led to another, and led to another, and led to another. So I've been doing it now for 11 years and loving it. So. Well, that's amazing that they came after you to, and knocking on your door uh, to be a coach. I often say that uh, when I was coaching, it's like, well, I'm really too opinionated to be a coach, so I created a different term. <laughs> I'm a coach salter now. I'm a, a coaching mentoring consultant. <laughs> Yeah, I'm with you. I'm with you. I'm also. It's like I know. I'm going to tell you what you, you know what you need to do. I'm not going to have you lay on the on the couch for you know, which is what I imagined, right? You know, lay on the black couch for six months and say, "How do you feel about that?" You know, oh, we'll right. see you next week. You know, I, I'm be like, okay, we're going to dive in there and say, what what is it going to take to get you the results? And so I realized I was a results driven coach. So yeah, and I'm and I'm far too opinionated to to be a traditional be coach, a I coach. guess. So yeah, All right. Well, other other than being opinionated, are there other attributes or traits or qualities uh, that you have that contributed to your success? Well, you know, I I, I thought about that as um, as you had shared that question with me prior, and and um, one of the things I, I really you know there's lots of there's lots of qualities, right? You look at successful people and you say, okay, what are the qualities? What what led you to success? But there are a few that I think really made a difference in my life. And one of them is consistency. I think that people try things, they get started. I work with, I've literally worked with thousands of entrepreneurs and business owners and leaders. And, you know, there's a lot of people that just try things out. They're like, hey, I'm going to give this a go. And, oh, well, you know, it's too hard, right? Or maybe I'm not cut out for this. They start that little voice conversation about maybe I'm not cut out for this. Maybe I, you know, heard God wrong, you know. <laughs> maybe that wasn't what he wanted me to do in my life. And so they, they stop 
and they don't have the, the consistency to see it through. And so that was something for me is that I really, I really have been consistent over the years and which leads to the other uh, quality, which is focus and staying focused on what it is that you truly want. Of course, you got to know what you want. Um, and that has evolved over the years for me, but to stay focused, even when you do course correct, it's staying focused on the, on the, on, on what it is that you really want. And then the other, the other one is, is, <laughs> it sounds kind of woo woo, but it's, it's hope. It's, it's the hope and belief that it's possible to succeed because a lot of times I think people give up because they don't believe that it's really possible. I mean, why play a game that you can't win, right? So you go out and play another game, you know, find another game that you could win. And so for me, I really believed that I could be successful. And, um, and so I, I, I kept at it. it. It allowed me to be consistent and focused. And, and then the last one is love is, you know, you meet people and not everybody has the same values, you know, as you, not everybody has the same habits as you and or way of doing business and or life for that matter. And to really love the process, love life and love the people, no matter what happens, it's not being based on what It's not based on what other people do to you as to how you feel about them. It's really loving people unconditionally and um, and loving the process unconditionally. So that for me in my life was really was really it has has those all have been things that have contributed because if you don't have the joy, you don't have the hope, and you don't have the love, then you're going to get cynical, and you're not going to want to you know again you're not going to want to play that game. Does that make sense? Oh, absolutely. And cynical people are absolutely miserable to be around. Yeah, yeah. And, and nobody likes to lose. Nobody likes to fail. I mean, who really enjoys and says, oh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do this and it's going to suck? You know, nobody wants to be that. And so if you feel like that and you're in that state, then you're going to give up. And so then if you, when you give up, of course, you can't succeed if, you know, you give up. So it, it leads to that success when you can, you can stay the course. And keep right. that 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 hope and, and faith that it's possible to to make your vision a reality. Oh yeah, the hope is necessary. I think there's a quote that I heard attributed to Albert Einstein, and I don't think I have the numbers correct, but um, anyhow, from his failures, he said he didn't count, he didn't look upon them as failures, but rather one thousand ways that it, something didn't work. Maybe it was in his development of electricity. So he he yeah. kept at it yeah. despite all those Absolutely. failures. Exactly. And that's where the consistency comes in because he was also very consistent. Consistently over and over and keep keep at it, keep at it, keep at it. Because when you're in that space of figuring it out and you're in problem solving mode and you're figuring out, okay, this, this didn't work. Okay, let's try this. Okay, let's try this. Let's try that. When you stay in the, the, when you have the focus on that challenge to solve that challenge or that problem, then all of a sudden it's like your creative, your subconscious mind focuses on it, works on it, and, and ideas stop pop, popping up. That's where innovation comes from. Henry Ford, when he told his team and said, you know, I, I want you to be able to build this motor, right? And, and they said, it's impossible. And he said, yes, six months, you know, <laughs> like, right? So J- John F. Kennedy going to the moon. It's like, you know, we're going to go to the moon. Like, Are you crazy? You know, but they stayed at it. Right. They focused, they stayed consistent, and they believed it was possible. And so they made it happen. Well, Nicole, in your um, adventures as being an entrepreneur, I know there were probably some major adversities or trials that you had to overcome. Can you tell us a little bit about those and how you persevered through those? Sure, yes. My life has been a a journey of peaks and valleys, and I think many of us can can appreciate that and, and relate to that. Our business I alluded to earlier is that we had this family business and I have my own business and I have this family business. And, you know, and, and I ended up spending more and more time on this family business because it was so lucrative and it was growing so well. We had vertical growth and it was phenomenal. Um, to, and it was a great experience. And uh, I really thought that was what I was going to do the rest of my life. I mean, we built a multi-million dollar business at almost $10 million. That was back in the early 90s, and uh, which we've been you know, with the multiplier effect a lot more today. And uh, and so we we had vertical growth. We were we were on a growth plan to easily 
you know, 10 times that business in, in a few short years after that. And so I really thought that was my future, legacy built, done, you know, my financial, and it was a lot of it was passive, passive income, so it was fantastic. So my family's taken care of, my parents, you know, they're taken care of, brother, myself, my children. And so, but through, through a series of events, um, and one of the things that seems to be a theme in my life is I've, I've gone through different phases and different experiences of betrayal and, tre- and treason, which I know are strong words, but that's really what it was, whether it be a business uh, in business or at home. And, and so what happened is, is we were in business with some people that didn't quite have, you know, you, you add some zeros on and people get greedy. And so, and they're, they get power hungry. And so they didn't quite have the same values as us. And, uh, and they ended up destroying the business. Um, the business arena, the business, the re- actually what they destroyed is they destroyed the relationship and they started to undermine our, uh, in- our integrity, our leadership and all of that. And as a result of that, the business failed because people started to get confused, right? And in confusion, people stopped. And so they check out. And so it really created, it was a mess. And so the business in a few short years was gone like that. And so that was an extremely painful experience for me and for my family because you lose you lose everything. You lose the relationships, you lose the money, you lose the, the future, all of that, and you, and you wonder and you say, what the heck? And so um, that was a major, a major uh, trial and adversity that I, that I had. What I, what I got from that was you can look at it as, you know, a failure. You can look at it as something that is, you know, to you, you disdain. But I, I looked at it and I said, okay, well, what, what did I learn from that? I learned so much about business, leadership, integrity, team building, and we had thousands of people in our in our team. And so, you know, because it was in the it was in the direct selling network marketing industry, which is a great industry. So there's nothing to say about that, but it was it's a phenomenal industry. It's just that sometimes, you know, um, you you got you to make sure that you're in business with people that align with your values and with your mission and that you're going in the, in the same direction and that you have certain standards in place and measures in place to keep people on focus when things get exciting, when there's zeros added to the end, you know, and people are making tons of money because money sometimes, and people say money changes people, it doesn't, it reveals people. And, and so, you know, I learned so much in that process and of course training and developing because we helped many, many people, thousands of people to, to launch their, their own business. And, uh, and so that's actually where my training and coaching really developed, um, from a young age. And so in that, in that process, though, I, I looked at it and said, my goodness, what a gift this was to me. And I can look at it as, I can look at it as a curse. I can also look at it as this gift and this blessing of all these things that I've learned. And I'm only, I'm still in my twenties. I've learned all of this and I have my whole life ahead of me. And so the question right. isn't, you know, it's like, now what? Now what? And so I really dissected that, really debriefed what worked, what didn't work, what did I learn, what am I going to do next time? And it was that, all of that, which I learned that there, that really was the impetus for starting Discover the Edge and all the things that I taught and I have been teaching since then to business owners because I can see what's going on and I know what's down the road before they can see it because I've been there and I can say, Hey, you know what? You may want to put these things in place because this will protect you down the lo- down the road, you know? And, and so to be able to help other people to avoid having to go through those same uh, challenges that we went through, it was a, it was a, you know, I wouldn't change it for the world. Well, it sounds like that looking upon this experience as a gift rather than a curse helped you persevere, especially um, being able to do that in your 20s. I don't know that I would have been mature enough in my 20s to have done that. I think I probably would have had just a mad hissy fit or something as we stayed down south and and thrown in the towel and not have gotten anything. (laughs) Yeah, well, I started off there. I had the hissy fit, like freak out, like this is (laughs) why me? This is not fair. I went through that phase. But then I looked at it and said, all right, Nicole, you're going to stay there? Or like, now what? That's the question. It's like, okay, I'm here. I'm, I'm flat on the ground. I'm, I'm, you know, laying on the ground, looking up. I'm at rock bottom. The question isn't, poor me. Well, okay, well, no, why me? The question is, now what? 
what am I going to do now with this? Otherwise, and I'd still really be there, laying there. Yeah. Right. And it's definitely encouraging to hear you talk about uh, the fact that this whole thing was a gift because I always tell people, you know, if you didn't go through the hard times, you wouldn't be the person you are today with the experience and the knowledge you have to bring forth to those people from those experiences. Right. That's right. Exactly. Well, as you look at your your current businesses now, what vision do you have for them over the next five years? Mm, For my next five years, it's funny because I'm I'm such a strategizer and planner, and, you know, it's like, okay, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. And, I don't know, God surprises me. I mean, my goodness, if I were to look back seven years from, you know, from today, prior to today, and I... And you would have told me that I was living in L.A., that all these things would have occurred, I, I would laugh. And yet, at the same time, I know it is important. So, you know, you you got to stay flexible to what God, some people call him the universe, whatever. You know, that, that, that God, you know, to me, I look at it like he's got a bigger plan for me than I could ever dream or imagine. And so, to stay flexible in that. But the vision... In the general terms, as I said, that being said, I still do have a plan, yes, and it is to build a uh, community of leaders of transformation. And that's where the podcast comes in and um, the Leaders of Transformation podcast, and I've interviewed some incredible people there. And it's really how do we create that community where we can work together, we can collaborate, because what I see in the world that's happening is there's a lot of coaches, there's a lot of people that want to make a difference out there, leaders, and and so, you know, we need to work together rather than working against each other and or apart in silos. And so it's building that community where where people can work together and can really have that ripple effect, that compounding effect go out. And so that that's my bigger vision. How that actually is going to look and, and how it's all going to play out, that's the part that I'm staying flexible with. But it starts off with, you know, the podcast, which I already have in place, and then masterminding, coaching, training, you know, events, um, supporting people in those initiatives and whatever they need to, to support them to make those, those dreams a reality. So that's, the, that's that element. And then along with that is, of course, mentoring and, and, and supporting the, and coaching the upcoming leaders, the next generation of leaders and the people that really want to make a difference and, you know, the difference makers and the world changers. So that's 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 really where I see um, my whole life has kind of led to that. You know, it's like wow. first I had my own, I had my business, and then I coached entrepreneurs, and I coached them, which I still do, co- coaching one-on-one uh, entrepreneurs and uh, solo entrepreneurs as well as larger uh, organizations and business leaders and their teams. And now it's like, okay, how how can we create that multiplier effect? And so it's coaching the coaches, it's leading the leaders and saying, okay, it's the one to many. So that's the vision for the next five years, to putting the the pieces in place to make that happen. Wow, that's pretty impressive. Um, I know as you look back on this business startup, that there are probably some lessons, some big ahas you've had as a part of running this business. Can you talk about one of those for us? Sure. Lessons for starting Discover the Edge were, were... you know, and I kind of alluded to it, is stay open. I mean, I thought I was going to do workshops and seminars. And, you know, when people started coming to me and saying, hey, could you coach me? Initially, I said, no, no, you don't want me to coach you. But, you know, it's being open to what is going on in the market. What does the market want? And so that's important is to realize and saying, okay, you know, I need to pay attention. People are asking me for this. This is a clue. You know, I, I need to, and, and this is what they, this is what they need, you know, and, and it supports and serves what I'm looking to do. And so it's to, you know, to, to be open enough to see that rather than being so tunnel vision that you miss, you miss the opportunities. So that would be, that would be one. Another thing is, you know, is really knowing what kind of business you want. You know, there's this perception that, you know, business is all about building a big business. I've had coaches that I've brought on my team, amazing, wonderful people, and yet, you know, and they've and they've now moved on to, you know, build their own brand, and and that's great. 
And I realized in the process of all of this this uh, transition is that I'm not looking at this point in my life. I'm not looking for hundreds of employees and all of this. I'm, I'm not looking for this big, you know, office and all this. I'm not looking for that anymore. At one point I was, but I'm looking for the freedom. I'm looking for the flexibility. I like to do my business where I, you know, wherever I am, whenever I want to do it, with whomever I want to do it, I'm looking for leverage. And so it's just knowing what you really want your business to look like, not what other people think it should look like, like, you know, the peanut gallery that says, you should do this and you should do that. <laughs> right. You know, right. So it's really, it's really staying true to yourself and what you really want and knowing there's no right or wrong answer. It's just, you know, business is about creating so much value in the marketplace. It's, it's actually exchange of value. Business is just strictly about an exchange of value. So how you do that, how that looks, you get to choose. Well, do you think some of that change um, in what you wanted and the kind of business you wanted is derived from you just maturing as an individual as well? Yeah, I think so. I think so because, you know, when you're young, you're like bigger is better. You know, right. it's like bigger is more recognition or more, you know, uh, um, notoriety that kind of thing. I mean, the whole, when I talk about the leaders of transformation, you said it's impressive. You know, to me, I, I look at it, I'm like, it's not, not going to be about me, right? It's going to be about building the community, and I'm going to have people that are going to help me to do it because I couldn't do it on my own. I think if you have a vision or a dream and, and goal that, you know, you can achieve on your own, they're probably too small, right? So, you know, you want to be able to have something that's so that's, that's exciting enough to you that it draws you towards it, but then it also draws others. Um, to right. it, but but that being said, yeah, you know, I mean, you get to the point where you're like, I don't care about it. Do I care about all this stuff? You know, I mean, I, I don't, right? So some people want to have. I actually, it's funny because I I am a coach. I, uh, you know, I, I have a I have a a rate that I charge for my with my clients, and I've actually had people say to me, you should be charging a ton, like a lot more, like. Five, ten, twenty times more than what I charge, and because I I am not being arrogant, I am a I'm a good coach, and I've done a lot of training. I've invested in in learning and honing my skill, and so you know I am a, a you know I've developed a certain level of mastery in that. And yet, yes, I can go and I can work with you know corporations and all of that, but I also love working with solo entrepreneurs. I love working with small business owners. People that are just like grassroots, that's where I started. And they're not going to be able to pay, you know, those huge amounts to be able to work with me. So I need to look at ways, and I and I remember when I still work with them one-on-one, I also do group coaching, and look for ways that I can build that leverage so I can have both, if that makes sense, so that I can... That I can oh, absolutely. Because the money, you know, business is about making money. you got to make money, you got to be profitable. But I'm not, as I said, I also, I, I recognize that the first and foremost thing that's most important to me is fulfilling my purpose. And then the money will follow. And even if I don't make gazillions of dollars and don't charge, you know, like I know Tony Robbins, although I think, you know, it's awesome and he's worth it. I mean, he charged a million dollars apparently to, you know, coach one-on-one. I have friends of mine that, that charge, you know, anywhere between a hundred, two hundred thousand dollars a year to be life coaching one-on-one. Awesome. You know what? And they meet a few times every every few months, you know. And it's like great, but you know, I'm not. I, I don't need that. If that makes sense, I'm. I just. I want to make sure when I get to the end of my life, I want to know that I made a difference, and that I, I I have no regrets. And it's whatever is right for me. It's whatever is right for them. My friends that do that, that's right for them. I've got to look at what's right for me. What brings me joy? What fuels? What feeds my soul? So I kind of went off a little bit there, but does that answer your question a little bit? Oh, absolutely. You know, I was thinking of the, uh, I don't know if it was, I don't know what movie it was, but I remember it had Danny DeVito in it, and, uh, you know, his motto was, you know, he who has the most toys wins. And so I think as you get older, that that becomes a lot less attractive to you, and you do want to start doing more things on your own, on your own path, in your own way. Well, you can't take it with you. Hey, I love cars. I love I love certain things, absolutely. But you know what? You're, there's no U-Haul behind the, the hearse. 
You know, you can't take it no. with you. So what you can, what you can take with you, and what you can leave behind that will last is uh, it's like they say, treasures in heaven. All right, is what you can what you can leave behind is the difference you made in people's lives. And if you're doing that, then that's that's first and foremost. And then, yeah, absolutely, figure out how you can build a build a business around it so you can make money at it, so you can do it all the time. Um, I do that right. with you know with, with my clients to make sure it's not like just oh we're just gonna just do what we love and so forth and not worry about money because unfortunately we do live in a society where you sh- you need to make money because yeah as, as I as I yeah I mean I say that I say to clients I say look you know what when you go to the grocery store they don't they don't take good intentions they take cash so if you want <laughs> exactly. if you want to if you want to eat and you want to provide for your family then you got to make some money so you know let's not be too uh, it's hard wrecker and peak potentials. They, you know, they talk about the money monks. Like, let's not let's not be the money monks where we're just like, oh no no. It's a tool. You can use money to make a difference. You can use money to 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 heal. You can use money to help. It's just a tool, you know. And so you need enough of that tool to be able to, you know, to, to make your life to make it work. What do you think is the biggest misconception or myth that people have about working with a business coach or maybe coaches in general? Uh, yeah, actually, you know what? That's, that's a great question. So there are two, actually. One of them, I would say, is that I've had people come to me and they actually expect me to do it for them. I remember I had mm-hmm. a guy and, and we did a strategic plan, identified where he is, I do with my goal. It's like, oh, okay, okay. Where do you want to go, right? Where are you right now? How are we going to get you from where you are to where you want to where you want to be? So we we developed that plan, and and he just was like, no, no, no. And anyway, so long and short of it, I said to him, I said, I, I figured this out. He said, what? And I said, you don't actually want to do this. You want me to do this, and then just send you a check, right? And and it was for the, for the strategic plan. It was about lead generation, all that, and and marketing and building up his business that way. And so, yeah, there are, there's a misconception that your business coach is actually, you're expecting them to do it for you or to tell you what to do. And that is not, that is not building leaders. That's not building a business leader. I could tell you, and I joke about it earlier as I tell you what you need to do. Yeah, there's about, there, obviously there's certain things you just don't know that I can share with, with right. my, that I do share with my clients. But it's really, it's a co it's a co-creating, co-collaborative, we're collaborative, um, you know, team on this. Because if I just tell you what to do and then you go do it, I just built and developed that conditioning of being a follower. And I'm not teaching you. So then you actually have to come back to me and say, okay, so now what do I do? And then now what do I do? And then now what, do they create dependence? And that's not what a coach is designed to do. A coach is designed to empower you. The greatest compliment is when somebody says, I'm awesome and I did this and, you know, and, and I, I made this happen. It's like, yes, you did, you know, and I appreciate the testimonials and people come back to me, you made a difference in my life. I appreciate that. But I want them to have confidence in themselves. That's number one. Number two is, is that they think that coaches are just out to get their money. Unfortunately, there's a lot in the industry that people have gotten into coaching, speaking, training, author of book, you know, authoring books that are there because they're opportunists opportunist and they see it as a way to make money. That is not the right reason to become a coach, speaker, or any, any. In, quite frankly, I don't see it as the priority for anything, but it's, you know, to, to, to not jade yourself and thinking that everybody is like that. Some are, but that's in every industry. You know, there are shady mechanics. But my dad owned a garage business and he was an incredible mechanic and honest and true and, and had integrity. You know, it happens in every industry. There are shady lawyers, but also awesome lawyers. There's shady anything, right? And so it's that perception that everybody's they're just trying to get your money, and that's not that's not the case. There's there's good people out there that really want to make a difference. Well, that's a great segue to my next question about somebody who's looking for a business coach. What advice would you give somebody who's out there seeking somebody to help them grow their business or develop their business? Well, in terms of the qualities that I would look for in a coach and a business coach, I also do business with life mastery. It's, you know, it's the combination that you can't ignore one, right? You, you know, you can't ignore the life because it's how you do anything, it's how you do everything. So from, from the standpoint of any coach, I think, is number one, they got to have, you know, I, I look for character. 
right? I, I look for honesty, integrity. These are core values for me. So I look for that in a coach, and I recommend people look for that. With that is also chemistry. Do I relate to this person? Do I do I gel with this person, right? It's just like any relationship. You know, you're looking for that chemistry. I also look for competence, right? So are they good? Do they know what they're doing? Do they have the competence? And I would say the last one that, that stands out for me is, do they have the track record? Do they, you know, coaches don't have to be, you don't have to be an MBA star to be a great coach because it takes a different skill set. But they have to have a track record in at least coaching others. But ideally, they've also had a track record, particularly when you're talking about in business, that they've had a successful business. You can't teach and you can't, you can't, excuse me, coach somebody as it, I don't believe you can coach somebody as a business coach unless you have been in business yourself. As one of my friends said um, years ago, he said, I think that unless, this is kind of a joke, a little bit of fun with it, but there is some truth to it. He says, unless you've paid your and made your payroll using your credit card, you're not qualified as a business coach. <laughs> well, that's <laughs> and, pretty good. <laughs> and he's basically saying, look, if you haven't had to put it all on the line, you don't know what it's like to be a business owner, and so you can't really coach anybody else to do that because you're just otherwise talking from theory. That goes for life coaching, too. If, if you know, if you look at somebody and they're saying, "Hey, I'm going to help you to build, you know, to be more healthy and, and vibrant and so forth," and you look at them and you're like, "They're not a picture of health and vibrance." How right. are they going to teach you how to do that? And so that's where it's really important to look at that track record. Yeah, I have clients, um, coach, clients who are coaches. You know, who often ask me, "Oh, Donna, well, should I go for this certification or that certification or the other certification?" And my answer is, well, you know, if it will really enhance your coaching ability, sure, go for it. But, you know, the number of letters past your name does not give any indication of how good you are as a coach. You know, either you can do what you've been hired to do or you can't, and no number of letters is going to change that. So that really puts it in a different perspective for them. Well, that's funny because I had somebody actually, it was a daughter of a family friend, known them for years. And I saw her grow up, and she she said to me one time on Facebook, she messaged me, and she said, oh, I see that you're now a business coach. She reconnected. I see that you're a business coach. How did you study for that? <laughs> and I'm like looking at this going, well, she's like, what course, you know, can I take? And I went, no, I'm not sure where there's courses out there. That's great. But, you know, quite frankly, it's 25 years of life experience, school of life experience. That's, that was my training. And so, the yeah. hard knocks, as I refer to it. This, yeah, the school of hard knocks, the, yeah, I call it the school of life experience. It's, it's that. That's how you get, you know, the experience you really need to be able to have empathy to really understand what an entrepreneur is going through in their mind, in their heart, and in their business, and to really know and saying, yeah, no, do okay, right, go this direction, watch out, watch out, here's what's ahead. You can't do that from a theory. You know, I'm, I'm not the smartest person yeah, academically, I wouldn't say. I know people that are very educated and have got all these university degrees. But what I have is I have experience. And, and one of my favorite quotes is, a person with experience is never at the mercy of a person with a theory. <laughs> so it's kind of my model. I look at it the same <laughs> way, except mine says, street experience beats book experience all the way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, Nicole, it's been great talking to you. Um, as we wrap up the interview, if somebody were looking for a business coach, how could they find out more about you and how you can help? Sure. So uh, thank you for asking. You can go to discovertheedge.com. That's my website, and there's also a link on there to the podcast. If you're interested, if you're a podcaster, you can also find on iTunes. It's Leaders of Transformation. But um, in terms of, you know, how I can help and, and that uh, element, is number one is clarity. You know, I can help you bring clarity to your purpose, your passion, your vision, and the real issues at hand, what's going on in your business, what's going on that's causing you to not get the results you want. And uh, that includes your net present position in business to really get good at, you know, get clear on where you're at uh, and then get clear on where you want to go, of course, and then build the strategy. So clarity, strategy, and the third one is confidence. A lot of times with my clients, 
um, say is that I just help them to build so much confidence in self because it's not at the end of the day. I'm not looking for people to say, hey, Nicole, you're great. What I'm looking for is for them and, and empowering them to be able to say, hey, I'm great. And that, that's really what it's all about. So discovertheedge.com. Got some free resources on there that you can access as well as the podcast, and, and that would be a great way to reach me. I'm also on Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, all of those places as well. Um, you can find me. Well, that's a great uplifting note to end this episode on. So, Nicole, thanks for joining me today on Business Innovators Radio, and thanks to all of you who are listening uh, for on Business Innovators Radio. I hope you all have a great day. Thanks for listening to Business Innovators Radio. To hear all episodes featuring leading industry influencers and trendsetters, visit us online at businessinnovatorsradio.com today.